Good morning, YouTube. We are officially past the bones of this trailer renovation and onto the skin, which is really fun. But demo has always been my name of the game for the last two years. So moving into renovation is a little scary because uh, I've never done it. So I even Googled like, uh, how do you even start a kitchen renovation? Where do we start then? Well, we start with what we know. I do know the appliances that are coming into the kitchen and I do know that I do not have enough power in that trailer to power the appliances or the mini split. Don't even get me started. I only have enough juice in the trailer to run all the lights and a couple of plugs at the same time. Great, how are we gonna solve that? Let me tell you, goal zero. Slow clap, slow clap for the goal zero because seriously, why not have power that is not only portable, but powerful and just has a ton of capability to be able to continue to charge itself and then also provide the power to the appliances that I will be using. Now that we know how we're gonna solve the power problem, what we need to do next is fit it into the design in the kitchen so you don't see it, but it'll be fully functional for what we need it to be. So that leads us to everything that's gonna power the kitchen. So now what we need to do is customize the cabinets to host all of this equipment and also mirror what we need to power. So let's get started. So this is the kitchen. Welcome to the tiny kitchen. I want to now, which I already started doing, like taping off what is what, what is where, if it's gonna fit, because all of our deliveries are coming in hot and we have the goals here on hand. So that's where we're at now. I am a huge fan of taping things out when you are unsure of a space, when you have things that you know will go into the room because you can kind of step back and see how it's going to be filled up. And in this case, taping out the mini fridge and the off-grid propane range allowed me to see what size cabinets I can add and where I can put the Goal Zero power system. So we are working with the Goal Zero Yeti 6000X. I also have an expansion battery, but the expansion batteries will fit right back here, which is really cool. So they'll just slide back here and they'll store more power so this will be open shelving over here you have your sink and your in sink dishwasher and up here will be storage for dishes and cups and things because even though it looks like i'm super tall i'm 5 8 which i guess is pretty tall, but oh my God, I'm so excited, I'm shaking. I have never built a cabinet before, and I looked up the height of what the frame should be, and that is 34 and a half inches. And then when you add the countertops, it should go up to 36 inches. That's what you see me taping out in the blue, just to ensure I like where everything's gonna go. Once I was excited with the tape, and where the placement was for everything, that's when you see me going in and start to cut down all of my two by fours, which realistically, I could have used two by twos or one by twos. I don't think I really needed to go so beefy with the wood. However, if you're building actual cabinets, this is what you would be using. So I didn't want to compromise the material for you guys and have you build um, not as sturdy of a structure. The off-grid range is actually deeper than the mini fridge. So the right two cabinets are gonna be a little bit bigger than the open shelving that I have going on the outside of the fridge. That's gonna be more flush to the depth of the fridge. Something that I already know I love about this process even though we're just doing boxes onto the floor, is the fact that this is fully customizable for your space. So that is always one of the bonuses in my opinion, which obviously I think all the DIYers know, is when you DIY something, you get to fully tailor it to your space, your needs, your function. Okay. Now, that's called a toe tick. That's a place literally for your toes to kick underneath the cabinet to utilize the countertop more comfortably. If I would have built what you see me building now, I would have had to take all those supports off, cut them down two and a half, three inches, and then added the toe kick back on. So it was nice to realize that slow and steady was winning the race right here and making me more efficient and productive versus me just rushing through a build because I'm like, oh, I just had to build boxes and throw them here. It's like, no, do your research, Rage Babe, slow it down. Once I had the shelves built and they were the 34 and a half inch requirement, I moved forward with cutting down the thinnest under laminate to put as the base of the shelf, but I am not gonna just be leaving it there. Now, you can do whatever you want. You can paint, you can add like a sticky mat. What I opted to do was add this like 
plank vinyl wood that I'm using in a bed build that is over on the left hand side of the trailer and utilizing that as the base of the shelves and even the doors to pull that wood tone that's from the left hand side of the trailer all the way to the right. When you walk into this open layout and everything is done, having the wood over here on this side and also in the bedroom will just create a really beautiful balance. For the open shelf on the corner, I did that planking, but vertically, because that is going to match the doors on the exterior of the other two. And again, just bringing this wood tone in is going to balance a lot of the red tone that we have in the buckskin flagstone flooring. And one more unexpected wood tone is adding that to the toe kick. When I see toe kicks, they're typically the same color as the cabinet. I didn't want white all the way down. I did not, I don't know, maybe I'll regret it, who knows. Here is where I think people might have an issue with what I'm doing. I am using hardy backer board, but please bear with me. I want to plaster over the hardy backer board. I figured it would stick way better if I do like a concrete or a masonry adhesion primer when I'm doing the plaster onto these cabinets versus just your typical like drywall board or your under laminate. And plus I had the hardy backer on hand, all these materials I already had on hand, which is a bonus because we're basically building these for $0 as of right now. Before we plaster, I want to be able to paint so I don't get any paint on the plaster. And so we are painting this kitchen a bit of sugar by Bear, which we did in the bedroom. And I am doing a flat finish, which is not recommended in a kitchen at all. You need some sort of sheen to be able to clean it better, but I'm not tripping out too hard to be honest. But again, that is not recommended to do a flat finish. I am also going to be painting the inside of the cabinets black, and that is strictly because the Goal Zero equipment is black. So when you open it, I don't want there to be a huge contrast. I want it to be like sexy and chic, like it was intentional to blend in. Just like I've never built cabinets before, I've never done a drawer, so I definitely learned from my mistakes. Number one, the hardware is really easy to install. Just slide it on out and screw it on in. You see me using a 90 degree angle bit, that red thing attached to my drill, and that just allows you to get into close quarters, so I installed the hardware that way and moved over to making a box that would fit within that space. Now, I do not recommend, one thing I learned, by using that thin under laminate, it just kind of felt like a cheap drawer. I highly recommend using at least a quarter inch ply as you build the box. And I opted to spray paint it black again to have it blend in. It wasn't perfect at all by any means. When I went to push the drawer in after installing it, I had to like literally push it so hard. It took me a couple times to adjust the screws to find the right finesse. Once I did, I just capped it again with that vinyl wood that I've been using throughout this whole build to again, keep that chicness, keep the texture, keep the warmth unexpectedly. After the drawer actually functioned, I pop on a piece of plywood that I cut down to the size of the opening to make sure that I have the right size wood to make doors later. But before we do that, we're gonna add this metal edging to the hardy backer to just make corners for these cabinets. Use some fiber tape to go over it to blend that metal to the hardy backer. And boy, oh boy, we're gonna go on in with this plaster. I mean, read the directions, right? I did a million times. I just didn't know how quick it actually dried, but I poured and mixed the plaster per the instructions and I started using Using it and it only really was successful on the first pass on the outside shelf oh my god this is so bad and i looked over in the bucket and within five seconds it was hard as a rock so i had to like go in with my drill and water and very forcefully remix this plaster but if i mixed it little by little as recommended and used it within its drying time we would not be in this situation <laughs> When the plaster was dry, I came back in with a chisel and just lightly ran across the straight edges of my cabinets and it cleaned it right on up. I even went in with 320 grit sandpaper and just rough sanded where it needed to be and these things were ridiculously smooth. We're on the theme of never doing things and I've never built cabinet doors, so I just did the most basic form with plywood on the back that I painted black, popped some wood vinyl on the top, and then to kind of seam the different pieces of the vinyl from the exterior, I added a very thin trim. And I didn't install any cabinet hard hardware quite yet. I just popped them into place. So just bear with me. I didn't really DIY doors quite yet. I wanted to see what these looked like. When it comes to floating shelves, you can do them a ton of different ways. I have never done this way in particular, but I had the hardware on hand that I totally forgot about. So I found the studs, opened up a hole, and just made sure that I was securing the floating shelf hardware into studs just to make sure it was as strong as possible. Once I knew where the measurements were for that hardware, that's when I just translated it over to the back of this piece of very thin red oak. I also finished the red oak with the Total Boat Honey because it's like a food safe finish. So if I'm throwing fruit or anything up there, it's not gonna harm me. 
When I step back, I honestly do not love the floating shelf, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there because the fridge is going to be blocking it and that actually will be utilized for like recipes and smaller spices, etc. So I'm just kind of leaving it there in hopes that I change my mind. But if I don't, I can take it off, take the hardware off and patch it on it. I definitely could have easily wrapped these with wood and then painted it white, but in person, when you're touching or in front of these cabinets, you can see the texture of the plaster. And that is exactly why I did it. Because we have more details to do, I am just rough fitting the goal zero into place and just making sure that the custom cabinets we built actually fit it. Right here you see me adding a Yeti Link expansion module because that is where the expansion batteries plug into and your solar plugs into that to be able to charge control what is happening power wise. Cool. So expansion batteries here are back up. Solar will be actually run from the outside and have its own station after the weather permits me to build it. And then this will plug into here. This will stay in here and we will make an access point. But because we're not using this right now for the kitchen since we're waiting for the appliances, but now we know we have the power, let's use this to power another build. Remember that bed build I was telling you about? Well, here, here's a little preview. And something that I am truly obsessed with with Goal Zero is bringing my workstation to me in one place. I have a bunch of different structures on my property that hold a lot of different tools. So being able to make like a power hub near where I'm working and not have to walk back and forth just makes me more efficient. And instead of running out of battery with this Goal Zero Yeti 6000X, I decided to pull out my Boulder 200 briefcase, open that sucker up, which is way more lightweight than I anticipated, and plug the extension cable into it and plug that into the Yeti. So the solar is charging the Yeti and it will never die. Oh, solar baby. You can see the screen change of the input output before the input was zero because nothing was coming in to charge the Yeti. You can also plug the goal zero directly into the wall, but I just thought how much cooler it would be to fully utilize the system that I have whenever I could. <laughs> That's so cool. Powered by the sun. Seriously, Goal Zero, thank you so much for sponsoring today's episode and just integrating into this trailer. I would not be able to live in it without the extra juice. I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I'm using them basically in every episode moving forward with the trailer. And if you guys want to check out their home backup system, their portable power stations, their solar generators, I have linked everything I'm using in the trailer down below. I mean, you just need to head over to their website and see every single product that they have because there is something for everybody over there to give you power anywhere, anytime, literally for any reason. <laughs> DIY is so cool. I never would think I would be customizing cabinets around a power station with Goal Zero in my trailer tiny home to be able to then live in it, but it's wild where DIY takes you. So I hope that you guys are DIYing something that you love, whether that's a physical project or just something in your life to make it the life that you would like to live. Thank you so much for the love and support. Again, thank you so much, Goal Zero. I will see you guys so very soon for another DIY.